to order. Please rise. I the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. School board will convene to a closed session tonight to consider the employment, probation, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. Under Wisconsin Statutes 19.85-1.C, for the varsity baseball assistant coach, head golf coach, assistant softball coach, courier and rapper of the spring musical, OTPT services, and staffing for 22-23. So, we have one yes tonight. <laughs> Did you wish to make any comments? No, okay, thank you for coming. Are there any items anybody would like removed from the consent agenda? If there aren't, the consent agenda is approved by consent with donations from the PTO, the PTO of $150 for the high school science project and the Pioneer Athletic Booster Club of $1,150 for the Girls basketball travel year. And then we will move to the administrator's reports. Begin with Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Lisa. Um, I'd like to start just by acknowledging our students and staff that participated in our town. Did anybody get a chance to see that? It was great. Wonderful show. It really and was. Ethan Frank, who had two days call to yeah. play the play the part, did right. a fantastic job. Yeah, that fit really well. And, um, they didn't have a background or scenery, but they were really set the stage so that you can envision the entire performance. It was wonderful. I thought it was one of the better shows. I'm calling Dave right now. Um, <laughs> we're sorry. bringing back our academic and career planning um, days with our students. Our first day is coming up December 1st. Uh, we didn't have it last year, of course, because we had COVID, and last year we really had to focus on the instructional needs. So um, because we had that alternative day schedule, but this year we're bringing that back. We're really excited about that. We already had a mock interviews for our seniors, and that's always a successful event. Mr. Lidke, you're part of that, and you interviewed some kids, and I think that went great. Yeah, it's great. It was really well, so thank you. Um, I, I did share a, a larger piece of information in regards to dual credit options. I will let you know that I'm working with Colleen and Tim, this is Margaret and Ernest Malcolm and myself are, in looking at um, options to or for our students. And you know that that's been a priority of ours for the last five years. And we've really added a lot of dual credit courses. Dual credit courses are courses that students can take here in our building and earn high school credit and college credit for at the same time. So I kind of laid that out for you. We have 24 credits of, of CAP opportunities right now. Um, we have five AP offerings. And then we have, for our, or will have, hopefully 26 credits of transcribed credits uh, for our students. Uh, as I said, we're working with Colleen Tim, who just met this week, and we're excited about that work that we're doing together. Um, however, uh, I'd like to talk about areas of need, and I think one area of need is that we are um, subject to teachers being certified by the HLC, the Higher Learning Commission requirements. And that's a really important thing. I think I've talked about it before, but there's a sunset date of September 2023. Um, you have to have one degree above the courses that you're teaching, which means if I'm teaching bachelor level, level courses, I have to have a master's degree. Okay, so um, most of our bachelor level courses, for your college courses, require a teacher to have a master's certification. If you don't have that master's certification, you can't teach those courses. So in a small school district like ours, if we have a teacher and we work hard to get them certified, it's obviously a commitment from them, it's a commitment from their family. But they're highly valuable, they're highly trained, and they're highly recruitable. Um, lots of districts want those folks because they can bring, if you pull one person that's certified out of your district, um, like a, a teacher with a math, master's degree, um, you might lose 10, 15 credits. And you might lose that in August, um, as, as that's when some of our bigger, bigger districts hire. So I just wanted to have that conversation, start that conversation. I know we're coming back to the board in March with a little bit more information on dual credit enrollment. Um, but I, I, you know, it's one thing that Colleen, uh, Tim, and I talked about is how challenging it is for rural districts. So we're looking at partnerships not only with other high schools, but uh, potentially technical colleges in order to, to, to bridge that gap if it were ever to happen to us in August. Because uh, we'd have to take those credits off the book that late in the game. So it is, it is uh, worrisome. But I wanted to keep you updated. Um, any questions on anything? 
Well, just to comment, very nice article on the CNC program and the Pulse. Thank you. And thank you for all your work with that, Adam. I'm sure that's been a lot to set up. And then uh, you mentioned Dr. Colleen Tim from CESA. Uh, Kyle and I heard a presentation by her at the Rural Schools Conference. And uh, yes, she has some excellent ideas and is very willing to work with us. And uh, she talked about her own son, who is at uh, UW Madison now and uh, went to the Pure High School and how many credits he gained in high school and how much money he saved for his family by having all of those credits um, when he left high school. So some good things there. Thank you. If I can just do one more, our student council did prepare a report. Um, so very briefly, they are working on uh, fundraising ideas. Um, they'd like to fundraise for successful scholarships. So one of the ideas that they have that goes along with a need that they want to fulfill is they're looking for a snack machine that has healthy snacks within the building. So they're researching that. Possibly they would like to purchase um, through grant opportunities, have snacks in there, sell them with the proceeds going back to scholarship opportunities. Um, they're also preparing a student activity prior to winter, uh, a winter break, a snow day activity with um, uh, cookie decorating, gingerbread house decorating, volleyball tournament, movie rooms uh, for the students to enjoy the fourth of Thanks. Mr. Hills. Thank you. Uh, the one thing that's in my report that uh, wasn't completed uh, but has since is our penny war that uh, we were raising some money for uh, the local VFW. Um, I was hoping you know, 500 would be a nice amount. Um, and with as much money that came in the first week, I was hoping that we can get to about $750. Uh, we cleared $1,000 from the coins and stuff that the kids brought in. So um, I'm working on making arrangements with the DFW now so that that check can be presented to them. Um, as a part of the community caring program, uh, as I mentioned, the school-wide we're doing stuff for the military for veterans. Uh, our next project is going to be doing letters to uh, I've, Work with Bridget Bowers and her daughter uh, being on a ship. She has a number of uh, crew members that uh, she gave us a list, so we're going to work on doing some notes to those sailors and sailing the information. So that'll be sometime in January. Those are, those are great activities for those kids, and if I can make a suggestion, get some of that information to Stephen for Facebook. Absolutely. It'll be well received. You know, the community should know that the kids are learning about. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Hills? Mrs. Margra. Um, in addition to the, my report tonight, I wanted to let you know that today was the first of two developmental screening child find opportunities. So um, our early childhood special ed teacher, speech and OT um, teacher met uh, in three families. So fall doesn't usually have, you know, um, as many uh, families come in, but we just need new uh, family families. So that was really nice. So that was the first of two. Um, and then i just like to highlight a little bit in my report, too. Um, I talked a little bit about the special education and 504 needs um, that are here. And every um, month I submit to the People Services Summary Report, and there's some changes. And I knew there would be changes before the board meeting. I um, just want the board um, to know that you know we are up to six new referrals, um, and that's referrals for special education services. But in addition to those referrals are from our local parochial school as well. So child find, um, you know, is a law where we, if there's a child suspected of any disability, that it is our responsibility to go ahead and um, see if that um, is the case and how we can help them. So um, it feels like it's a little bit of the trend that there's a lot of kids with a lot of needs. So we're seeing it um, throughout the county as well. Um, so six new referrals um, have come in for that. But in addition, we still have four student support teams that are in process. So we don't know if they will go to a referral as well. And I tell you this because I know you know that our teachers work really hard. And I'm telling you now they're working really hard and I really, really, we all really, really appreciate all the effort that's going into making sure that they can get what they need. So I really wanted to highlight that tonight for you. If there's any changes that come, any other recommendations that might come, you will be uh, the folks that you know we report to, to to let you know. Thank you. Any questions for Mrs. Marka? Maybe that is one. Does anyone have questions they want to direct for the athletic director's report and the gifted and talented report? 
Uh, today, uh, confirmation that the Dora County Equity Committee is having their second meeting on Wednesday, December 1st. They had one meeting in the summer, then they set up another one, and we can call the other one's one's time, so we do have the next meeting coming up on December 1st, so that's good. That's it. Okay. Um, I don't have anything. Committee reports, communications, um, they met on um, Monday. The most recent newspaper came out. Everybody should have gotten in the mail a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, the next one, look, we moved to three per year now. So we'll go like February, end of the school year, and then into the fall. Um, uh, we're gonna, Mr. Lukey is going to put together a rotation requesting various areas to provide um, information on their activities for the, for the Facebook and Facebook. Instagram accounts. We talked about it at you today with the staff tomorrow. Um, so that's about it. We'll meet again in January to start planning that next newspaper. Property buildings and security. Well, okay. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Tell us. Okay. Uh, we met and we took a tour of uh, some concerns in the building, some minor concerns, uh, doors and, and, and uh, lines and that sort of thing. Took a, a tour outside. I'm glad to see it. The landscape company has finally gotten some uh, uh, stabilizer down so that uh, when winter arrives, the soil is going to wash down into the parking lot. It looks like we've got most of it done by now. I think it's all done. I'm very much impressed by the uh, football, the football field bleachers and that whole setup. I mean, compared to what we had, uh, it's amazingly uh, really updated. The football field, I think we have still some questions with with Hutchinson, um, some grass seeding problems, and probably hopefully to resolve those uh, next spring. Uh, otherwise, that whole area. Uh, looks well. It's really uh, it's quite a uh, change from, from what we had uh, previously. Uh, the track and field um, additions. Um, certainly, I think there, there, we have a few concerns about the slope uh, of the land there and that sort of thing. But uh, I think all in all, it, it looks very much improved. Um, certainly, looking at phase two of the uh, athletic field. Uh, project and uh, how that may progress. Uh, we haven't discussed that to the extent yet, uh, but I think most of the building issues are being resolved uh, little by little. Yeah, I do what you got. Yeah, we can get to that point. So all in all, I think it was a good positive. Yeah. No, nope, uh, he said it well, and all those things uh, are being worked by the teams involved with them, so we think they'll bring them to the board with these things. Do you want to add this with I was going to wait for okay. facilities and building reports. I can get what I got. Yeah. Um, budget report. Budget report uh, cash on hand and fund 10 is 4.1 million, almost 4.2 million. Uh, you can see fund 49, the building construction has one point. $1,174,000 left in it, and at fund 46 has 917000 left, and those funds will be used between the final payments to Myron and the subcontractors for the building and the um, field project out there. Uh, it'll be close where we're at. We've had some changes here recently, minor ones, but it's not too bad, so we could share. Um, anything else, Carl, we should talk about? Um, just that uh, we had talked to the auditor about Fund 80 and different, got more clarification of what we can charge in Fund 80 so we can utilize it more because our Fund 80, we put the same amount in, but it's not, the, the fund balance is not going down. So we need to be able to charge more to it and do more things with it um, going forward. But we got more clarification from the auditor. So should be able to do a better job with funding going in the future. And the auditor should be here to this the board. Yep, the auditor should be here. Do. We should have the final paperwork here so soon, 
and she was planning on being here on the December fourth meeting to go through the audit report. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Project? Well, let's talk about the building first. Oh, building. Um, okay. Building the flooring for the 65 section of the hallways, the back half of the face room, and the cafeteria has arrived. Uh, they only have one member of their crew here installing it right now. He's doing like the stairwell in the back half of the face room of what he can get done. Because you can't walk on the surface for three days after you lay it because of the glue, we, like one person could cut across it, the whole herd could not. So they want to do it on a Friday. Uh, problem is, is to run, you know, this Saturday's deer hunting, so the deer hunters won't come in late for flooring. So it's going to take a few weeks to get that done. Uh, the cafeteria floor needs to be prepped, but it's only where a couple cracks are, so it's not too bad. They can prep it one day and we can still use it as a cafeteria the next day, so that's good. Uh, there's a delay in some of the doors for the 1965 section. We've been waiting, it seems like forever, the order in May. They think they'll be here in January. Uh, the appliances for the face room, the last shipment, we were told they were in Illinois, and then we volunteered to go pick them up, and then they said, oh no, they're on a freight or someplace. So Tara is now canceling that ordering one code and ordering them from Home Depot to get them here sooner, because she's doing labs there and whatnot. So it's odds and ends. We have a checklist for going over with Myron all the time, and little by little things are getting checked off the list, so. How's the greenhouse situation? Uh, they think that the material for the roof is going to clear the inspection from the state, but the screen, the shade, they still haven't figured out a um, fire resistant shade that's appropriate for a greenhouse that's directly attached to a school. So I don't know when look at that result. Yeah, that's, that's a problem right now. And then today Dan's challenge was this first really cold day and getting the second floor of the 1965-98 portion of the building to the right temperature because this side of the building did it no problem but that's got the longer run of the water and to get there to supply it and so the trick is how you get the hot water over there I don't know they're gonna work with the boilers and figure it out it's gotta get done but it's gonna take some one thing dad told me is right now they got the boiler water temperature set here coming out of the boiler at 130 degrees and it used to be 185 when it was in the old building. So I mean, it has to be 165 for the new building. Right, so they may have to increase the boiler, which will make it not quite as energy efficient, but the 65 building does not have a boiler. And it never no, has to boiler. Here. No. It's over here. It used to be in the old building it's in the 24 section, and now it's moved over here. So the 65 section does not have a boiler. So it's fed with the boilers here. So it's a matter of getting hotter water running that far to get more radiant heat. Radiant heat coming out. I think it's 800 feet it's got to run, something like that. Yeah. And so it loses uh, 20 some degrees by the time it makes the run. Those plates are all insulated, I assume they got it. Right? Yeah. I'm yeah. assuming yeah. they got it. Yeah. Dan says when the time it gets over there, it's only 75 degrees. Well, it sounds like you got to turn it up. Yeah. The bill keep working. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. <laughs> would just take it as that today. Well, because it's first cold day, and I'm just saying, I'm cold. Well, and it was like 64, you know, yeah, it's cold, it's not where it's supposed to be, so he's got to play with the controllers and talk to the guys who run it, and they'll figure it out. It's all new stuff. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, field project, uh, point of beginnings did come back and reshot some elevations, and they're supposed to give those elevations to Hutchinson so he can do some leveling out there by the shot and discus area in particular. And then they're going to do a couple across the football field as well, and then they'll figure that out. So I, I, I haven't seen Hutchinson come back, but I wasn't able to look at either. So, I don't know. so at least field, I know POB because I saw them out there a couple of days shooting numbers. So that's good. So they keep moving on it. Any questions on that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So do you have anything legislatively? Uh, yes, just a couple of things. Uh, of course, the big news is the uh, bipartisan bill that was uh, signed into law. And there are a number of things that affect schools in that bill. A total of $65 billion for broadband investment to help families access the internet and afford devices. 
uh, five billion for clean energy school buses, uh, five hundred million over five years for competitive grants to schools and nonprofits for energy efficiency improvements, and uh, twenty million over five years for uh, lead contamination in school drinking water. So uh, there are some good things there for schools that uh, we may want to access. And then I just wanted to highlight in my report, I indicated at the Rural Schools Conference, which uh, I would encourage anyone to attend next year because it will be a national conference in Green Bay. And uh, Kyle, I think you would agree that the sessions were outstanding at yeah, this conference. Good. And I think it will be even better next year because it will be nationwide. But one of the sessions I attended I thought would be helpful for our equity efforts. It was entitled, We Are Many United Against Hate. And this is a national movement. But uh, this session was very impressive because they had students from McFarland, Deerfield, and Dodgeville, which are not big metropolitan city school districts by any means. These students did an outstanding job talking about their efforts in dealing with the kind of divisions that we see in our society now. And I happened to talk to one of the board members from Dodgeville after this event, and I said, gee, your kids did a really great job. And he said, well, thank you, I appreciate that. And then he said, the kids get it, the adults don't. So I thought that was quite interesting and just emphasizes that need for us to listen to our kids and to engage them. And they were very engaged in this process. So it was great to see this kid, and very well spoken. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, the only thing I'll highlight from board goals is that everybody should try to get into the superintendent evaluation module and get some of it done for next month. Um, I'm finding that it sounds, it sounds, I'm sure it's going to be a great thing, but it's it's not an easy thing to navigate, I don't feel. It's a little cumbersome. It's cumbersome, yes. If you ever need help, call Stephen and he'll help you. <laughs> I mean, if, you, if everybody's having trouble with it, maybe we need to have a little to learning cool. session, like schedule a learning session on it. So, I don't know if anybody's tried it yet or not, but... Um, is the original uh, connection that the, I mean, the... I asked her to resend all of the, all of the, resend all of the logins. Oh, okay. Do you need it again? Yeah, I mean, we yeah. have it as an email, but uh, I don't know. I haven't clicked on that, uh, try it. So well, give, give it a try when you're, you're dear friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but she's got to resend the, uh, the email. in our inbox or email. Yeah, it should be in your email inbox. Okay. So <coughs> try just at least try to log into it so you know you can log in and kind of keep going with that from there. Um, school operations 21-22. Yeah, the recommendation is to stay as we are. Currently, we have two active cases. Um, tomorrow we'll have one because one's coming back. We got uh, six students that are required to wear masks as a close contact now. But yeah, it's six right now, so the numbers are low, we're doing okay. Questions, anyone? And then we'll move to the new business and the new high school course proposals for 22-23. Um, we have two courses proposed for the upcoming school year, and one of them is the sequence, the CNC uh, machine pathway. Um, this is a really great opportunity for staff school students. Uh, this has been in, in, in motion for, for more than 15 years. I've had conversations with businesses around the county and they say that there is a growing need for uh, manufacturing in our county. Um, that has only expanded tenfold and now it's the most growing industry in our county. It's, it's manufacturing. Um, so to meet that need, NWTC has been looking for a long time to put a site in our county, but they, they're unable to facilitate that. Um, so when we started the referendum process, we started working on that with NWTC really early and said, what do we have to make our space look like in order to offer these courses out of our lab? 
Um, and then we've been working together now for the last probably 18 months, two years, to facilitate that opportunity. Now it's a great lab and we have a wonderful teacher, Mr. Paul, who does a great job, but we can't share that much of this time because I need him for woods classes, I need him for drafting and pre-engineering classes and all those other courses. Um, so this is a way for us to, to get an NWTC instructor to come to our campus, teach an additional 16 credits. But we want to fill that class, and we want to fill that classroom, um, and this is a very specific training course. So we may not be able to fill it with just the basketball students, so we've opened it up to, um, to other school districts, and all the four main, main uh, county districts will be involved with this project. I'm really excited about that. Um, we're also having business meetings with our business partners, and I've had three businesses sign on as partners. Um, they'll facilitate the cost for some of the instruction so that we can uh, not pass that on to students and or uh, other school districts and we can just help for our own students and in the coursework. So really excited about that. Beyond that, WTC is going to probably approach the, uh, the school district so that they can have adult classes in the evening. Uh, but by completing these 16 credits, they'll receive a certificate as a machine helper. They have the first year of a technical degree completed. Um, they just need one more year and they are fully certified. Um, and the conversation for me has really been with our businesses, it's been about um, building problem solvers. Because I've seen this happen where uh, you know, businesses are, are more than happy to hire anybody because they have so, such big needs, but there's not a lot of job satisfaction, there's not a lot of growth because they're just babysitting the machine, pushing the button. Uh, but if they learn how to solve problems, how to do machine setup, how the whole operation works, it's not only really satisfying for them, it builds stronger businesses and makes them more proficient and successful. So all the partners that I've talked to so far have been really, really complimentary of what we're doing here. Um, we're working with NWTC, DCEC, and then those business partners. It's gone really well. So um, I hope that, uh, I mean, we're kind of the, the host. I hope the board would approve this and uh, allow us to continue in that path. The other thing that we did is we obviously last year took a really close look at our, our science department. We continue to do that. Um, so we bring forward for you an advanced placement chemistry offering. We're also looking at having that a CAP class as well, uh, offered through UWGB. So CAP isn't really the right language. CAP refers to UW Oshkosh, but UW uh, Green Bay is willing to do that dual enrollment credit with us too. So we probably will pursue both options. Um, to make sure that that's available to our students. But that extends our science opportunities for students. So those are the two offers. So I have a question. Sure. When, <clears throat> when we open up and allow other schools to participate, mm -hmm. how does that vetting process go? Because I, mean, I could really see this taking off and as having lots of kids that are really eager to want to do this. I hope so. Yeah. yeah how, we, how does that work? Well, we're, we're, we're going to have an application process to get to that point. We have a okay. maximum seat allowance. Um, but this is a pilot program that we hope grows into more than this. I've talked to the other districts about what's their interest, what's their passion, what do they want to push forward as a community, because we can't be all to everything. I can't, for example, I can't have, we can't have, we can't afford to have, a, you know, a CNC lab, a home construction program, a state-of-the-art, um, uh, auto mechanics program, but boy, I would love it if another school district said, send your autos kids to yeah, us. Yeah, you yeah. know, we do the CNA program right now, which is ran out of the hospital, they facilitate that, but if we can have those opportunities through our community, and we are already working, um, I think there are some early developments with some of the districts that they, they see some options within that building, and I, I, we're hopefully going to follow the same model. So it's very exciting because uh, it's great opportunities for kids. It's really setting up magnet schools it's where kind of kids can go for the trades, yeah, the skilled position, skilled workers, absolutely, yeah, exactly. So we'll still maintain enrollment, and we don't want to take anybody's enrollment by any means. But right. we just want to share that because, like I said, if I had, if we had to set up an automotive mechanics uh, lab here, that would be extremely expensive and hard to maintain. And there's another instructor. How do we find another instructor? And, and but if if uh, another school district's doing that, well, great. We'll share our kids and. All these courses here will be taught here. All no, no. Right, right down the hallway. Yeah. Okay. So they have a one-year degree. The the second the, the, we can't. They won't do two years here. Not to go they will do two years here. They yes. can do the two years yep. here. That's how we hope to expand and grow uh -huh. that. 
Um, there's only a, a small portion uh, measurement that we don't have. Well, well, there's some equipment pieces that we don't quite have in place yet for the second year, but we're, we're, we, we work together to obtain that equipment. Uh, most of it is measurement devices, and they have some of that in their welding program already here in Surgeon Bay. But Dr. Raffin, uh, the head of NWTC Green Bay, and all the satellites, is very supportive, really sees us as a, the direction that their college wants to go. Um, and so we've had a lot of success, great conversations, which just have to be the moment now. And there's a few more business partners. I'd like to have five business partners to cover the costs associated with that. We won't collect those funds. That's ran through Door County Economic Development Corporation. Um, so they'll be holding that money to pay for empty seats so, or other uh, program requirements. Um, so it really has been fun. Uh, it's, there's been some challenges, but I think we've worked through those and we're at a good point. All the districts are now getting their courses approved so that they can set students here hopefully. Great. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any, question, any other questions on any course offerings? There none. There's none. Is there a motion? I would approve, uh, move to approve the new high school course proposals for 2022 2023 as presented. Sorry, Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, Thank you. He can sue report. It said if you want to, the early registration for the Wisconsin Association of School Works is by December 15th. So if you plan to go, you should let Jean Kukul know. Jean told me she has four rooms reserved. So if anybody wants to go, we have four rooms that she'd like to fill them up. So let her know if you plan to go. I'm assuming they're at the Hilton. I'm not sure. I'm I guess this will be the same place. You always okay, place. because the Hyatt is not going to be accessible from the Skywalk this year because of the renovation at the convention center. Okay, I, you have to. Uh, yeah, she just said she had four rooms reserved. I don't know exactly where it was at. I assume it's where. It <laughs> so early registration is December 15th. I guess you could register a little later, but. There's also a time at which she's going to have to cancel rooms. Right. And so it's cheaper to register, uh, register before December 15th. Yeah. And Sue, do you get a room through the WASB or through our district? I do get a room through WASB, yeah. Okay. Does Jean know that? Yes. Okay. The 2021 Wisconsin State School Report Card. <coughs> It can't. It's very heavy and dead bolted to the wall. So we're going to get started. I want to thank you right away for learning with us. Okay. I want to direct you really quickly to some materials that are in front of you that will help um, with the presentation. The first one that's in front of you is a picture of the new report card. Okay, so that is this year's report card right now. Um, it's going to be up here in sections, so it's nice to have it in front of you because you're not going to be able to see those sections in the PowerPoint. Um, the, on the, uh, the back page of that, again, is in the new report card. I invite you to keep that in front of you again because we are going to show sections of this in the PowerPoint. The next page over here is more detailed explanation of the front page of the report card. All right, so that is something that you can take a look at later if you have further questions. And then finally, one of the reasons why we wanted to have this is to absolutely talk about the new report card, but then to show you on the last page, um, it's a big deal because the new report card has a different look. 
so it looks different. So this page right here is what the report card used to look like. All right, so you can compare um, the old and the new. Okay, so these are some references for you um, as well. So uh, let's get started. So Mr. Bear, Mr. Hiltz, and I um, would like to go over the following um, points with you tonight. We want to talk about the new district narrative statement, the district details, student demographics, our overall score as a district, also our overall school, uh, scores as elementary, middle, and high school. We want to talk about priority area weights. Um, in addition, the priority area scores. Um, our district school accountability summary, and then finally, and most importantly, what is going to be uh, the achievement data, and then our plan for continuous improvement for our students. So we had the opportunity this year, um, it was the first year ever, where each school district could provide a narrative statement um, that makes, um, that personalizes the report card. Um, I took a stab at this this year, okay? I want you to know, too, that a lot of this language was vetted before by the, the district. I did take a little bit of this language from the Blue Ribbon. Um, so I didn't, I, I took the, you know, some things here and there that the, the school has already seen before. Um, my hope also uh, for next year is maybe to bring this to the communications committee so there can be a little bit more of a discussion about what do we want our report card to say. If we only had 400 characters, what are those best 400 characters that we can say to personalize this report? All right, so um, I'm not going to read it for you. I just They're pretty you good. Time. You like it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, good. yeah, thank you. The next part here is our student group. So this is our student demographics. And this is critically important that we keep the accurate data on our demographics. Our, do, uh, our student de demographics is almost, it's the starting point, okay? These are who our students are, and that drives the achievement data and um, the overall score. So up here, again, you know, it just breaks down our kids, right? The bigger categories in here, too, not only race, is our students with disabilities, our students that are economically disadvantaged, and our students who are English learners. We both want, we all three of us wanted to point out too that cautionary light there that, um, that you see, it's also in your report card as well. And what it's telling you is due to COVID-19 and due to our disruption in learning, the data that you see here, we don't want to give you the impression that it's not right for Sebastopol, but, we're, but DPI has asked us to uh, exercise caution when we look at this data. You know, the disruption in learning did a lot. You know, we don't know necessarily if the, de if, the act if the data is completely accurate. I want to say we feel really confident with our data here, but please use um, a cautionary lens when you dive into this yourself. So the big part, and mostly what people look at right away when they go to the, the state report card, is they go to that overall score. All right, and that's one of the only things that they look at. So our overall score, score this year was an 82, 81.2, which exceeds expectations, and it's something that we should be really proud of, okay? Um, how we got to the 81.2 is directly related to those priority area weights. So there's four ways that we achieve that score. The first one is an achievement, growth, target group outcome, and on-track graduation. And I know Mr. Bear is going to talk a little bit more about those areas. Those areas are weighted, dependent on our student demographics as well, and that's how we achieve the overall score of 81.2. Mr. Bear? Thank you. As Mrs. Margraff said, I'm going to talk a little bit about the four priority areas that help us achieve the score of 81.2. So this is on the bottom half of the first sheet, if you're looking at this right now. It's this bottom portion, so I'm going to talk about each of those. The first area that I'm going to talk about is the purple color, and that's student achievement. This is something that we're all familiar with. Student achievement is comparing district, our district students against state um, students and their averages. So it looks at how many skills they're um, gaining versus other students. So in this situation, achievement is based on two priority areas, or I'm sorry, two skills, and it's measured in English and it's measured in mathematics. So if you take a look at that, the first purple bar on the top, of a score of 83 is Sebastopol students. 
Um, that's compared to the achievement of the state of Wisconsin students, which is 61.8. The same thing is broken out for mathematics. Um, 89 out of 100 for mathematics for our students and 59.4 for the state of Wisconsin. The second priority area is student growth. So this is how rapidly students are gaining knowledge and skills year to year. Um, and the focus is on the pace of improvement. So the way that I understand growth is they look at uh, scores, standardized scores, and they project for students scoring at a certain range what their growth should look like. All right, so that's normed data. So if I'm scoring a 99% I'm in the 99th percentile, I should grow this much over the next year. Okay, so that's what our students are trying to get as targets. So they measure the same thing. They measure it in English, language, arts, and math. And you can see our students are growing at a rate of 66, and that is the same as the state average at 66. They do the same thing for mathematics. We're at 79.3, and the state of Wisconsin is at 66. The next area that I want to talk about is the green area, and this is the newest part of the report card. So this is something that may be a little bit unfamiliar. This is targeted group outcomes. This uh, means outcomes for students with the lowest outcomes achieving in growth, absenteeism, and graduation rate. So what I like to do is I like to think about achievement and growth, the first two areas that I showed you, as our district average. This down here is the average for the lowest 25% of achievers in our building, okay? So, on average, our students are achieving at a rate of 86. Our lowest 25% are achieving at a rate of 44. So you can see, and that's obviously why they're identified, it gives us a target audience to work with and work for, okay? So that's important. We can do the same thing with growth. They're growing at a rate of 67.9. When compared to growth up here, we're at 72.7. .7. So I'm fairly confident about that score. I feel really good about our average student is growing at a rate of 72.7. .7. Our lowest 25% are still showing pretty good growth. So that helps me um, look at that. Chronic absenteeism, you can go over here to on track. Um, we have a score for our average district at 87. And, I'm sorry, 87 is the state, we're at 90.6, and our target group is 82.4. The last one is graduation rate, and we are at 97.8 for our lowest 25%. That's really good. So even though they're in our lowest 25%, we're graduating most of those kids. And that is exactly the same, I think, as our graduation rate. I'm sorry, our graduation rate is 97.8. Oh, so it is exactly the same for our average student. The last area that we can look at is on track to graduation, and this is something that is common. This has been part of our state report card for a long time. Uh, but this is how students are achieving educational milestones that, predicted, uh, that predict later success. So if we take a look at this, chronic absenteeism, and you can compare it to the state again, same thing with graduation rate. Another thing that is really important, which I wish Jerry was here because third grade reading rate, so it takes a look at third grade reading rate, we're 77.5, and then uh, eighth grade mathematics, we're actually at 100 percent for eighth grade mathematics. It's an outstanding score. So, any questions on that? Because I know that's a little bit tricky. So, as I said earlier, when we started, you know, we have an overall score for our district at 81.2, but each one of our scores, our schools also have a score. So that's what I'm going to talk about next. We have one of our school, schools score um, at where we significantly see expectations. That is our middle school. Our middle school has a score of 94.9. So that's our middle school score. Exceptional. We have another, um, our other, our elementary school exceeds expectations um, with a score of 82.7. And then the high school meets expectations at 59.9. So that's where um, our each individual score, school scores, but again, encompassing all of that, our overall score as the district began was um, 81.2. One of the things that I wanted to say earlier when I, um, when I spoke and I, and I forgot to, is to say just the opportunity that the, the state report card does have. So we've seen a lot of really things that we can be really proud of. And we want to make sure that we continue to do 
doing, what is working for our students, but we also have that opportunity to use this information in front of us as a flashlight. Where does the data not make sense? Where do we need to dig deeper to find out the answers on why some of the scores have gone down or why some of those scores have gone up too? So the three of us have really looked, and with Mr. Lipke looked, and said, well, how can we use this really truly as a tool? In the past, we might have looked at our overall score, school score and given ourselves a pat on the back because it's been great. Now we have a new opportunity with the new report card to put flashlights on areas that we need to investigate more. Okay, so we really look at, when I say that, I'm like, oh, that's a flashlight moment. We've got to dig deeper into that to find out why we're exceeding in that area, because our staff and our students need to know why. And then on the flip side of that, if something goes down that doesn't make sense to us at all, we've got that flashlight again to dig deeper. So that really is um, how we are viewing our opportunity to use this state report card um, to, to put more flashlight and spotlights on things that we can improve or keep the state in. Um, so this <laughs> chart takes a look at the uh, district scores uh, based on the highest score and uh, the highest score and lowest score provides the average. Um, in our district, we only have three buildings, so it's relatively easy to look up a lot of these numbers ourselves. Uh, in seeing this chart, this is a chart that's going to be on any report card for any district in the state. If you've got more schools, um, something like this can be very helpful uh, to narrow down which school it is that you take a look at um, in a real summative way. Um, <clears throat> oh, sure. Sorry. No problem. Um, so, <clears throat> getting into some of the numbers, these are our um, four exams. The advanced and proficient numbers put together. One of the things we've talked about uh, for quite a while now is how can we see if COVID has had an impact on what we're doing in our school. And in looking at these charts, typically we're not trying to compare our students to other schools, but these charts really do help us by taking a look at what happened uh, from COVID. What happened before COVID, what happened after COVID. Um, <clears throat> there's a skip year listed in here. The skip year is the year that we did not test. So that would be uh, not this past spring, but the year before. And as you can see, in most cases, the ELA scores for the state and the other districts in the county, uh, the scores did dip, um, some more significantly than others. Uh, you can take a look at our scores, they dipped slightly. Uh, they're still higher than other scores in the county. So which um, scores are, which color is ours? Um, ours is the first section. The first section. Real so, yeah. Yeah. so this is Sebastopol, the state. Ah, got it. Thank you. Circulates uh, Southern Door. And then uh, blue bars is 1718. Orange is 1819. Then there's the skip here. And then the yellow is this past year. So for the first school. Uh, and again, you can see some impact, not as much um, as some other districts. And again, our sport ended up being. Uh, relatively high relative to uh, those other schools. Um, <clears throat> just looking to see if I missed anything. Oh, oh yeah. All right. Um, there's a similar pattern with math. Uh, you can see the other districts took a dip, state took a dip as well. So you certainly can see that COVID did have an impact in the other, um, around the state. Uh, but for Sebastopol, our scores actually went up after COVID. Uh, not something that we would have been expecting to see. Um, <coughs> but what your group is testing here? Um, <coughs> third grade. Right here. Um, <coughs> but one of the things in trying to take a look at the pattern, why would that pattern have happened? Um, certainly, I think what we were able to accomplish here in Sebastopol by having the kids in person, uh, when some of the other districts were not able to do that. Um, <clears throat> I know in talking to teachers as well, that they found that they could move a little faster because they had smaller groups that they could work with. They did not have to go back and repeat a lot of lessons. They could tell if the kids uh, understood the material while they were teaching it. Um, so there were a lot of advantages to being able to do that. And by the time we got to the fourth quarter, we were all 100% back in person. I think those are really significant things that helped us to accomplish some of what we have seen in some of these charts. Um, so that was third grade testing? Yeah. Um, 
One thing I would like to bring to attention though is that while this addresses some of the upper elementary and how they've been able to uh, manage since COVID, it's the kids below them that we have to use some internal data to take a look at. And knowing the number of referrals that we have for that age group, the number of kids who are working with title teachers in that group, um, there was not as much regular teaching as has happened in the past. If you think about reading, you think about uh, learning math, daily instruction is important. And even though we were able to have kids in every other day, certainly significant, but there's going to be gaps. So uh, that's an area that we need to take a look at. So even though this does show us that we were able to accomplish some things, I just want to be mindful that it only addresses the upper elementary with these charts. Thank you, Mr. Hills. Trend data is really important. That's what we're really looking at here. And I just want to highlight that for, for us. We have the same type of model here set up for middle school English language arts. And again, we explain spastical stage growth and so forth. But I, I want to look at this blue bar for a second because this blue bar represents, uh, the students represented in that blue bar actually are our senior class. Some of our senior classes in there, okay? Because last year, our seniors were, were uh, were juniors, okay, so they were juniors here. This year there were sophomores in that skip year. This year there were freshmen in the orange year. And this year they were senior, they were eighth graders. See how that works? So the state of Wisconsin uses three years of data to determine the report card. And so we're going back and we're looking at middle school, but we have a whole host of students involved. Let me see you look confused. <laughs> Let me, so, let me explain that in a different way. No, so, so the yellow bar is the seniors now. No, nope, the yellow bar is last year's. Last year's. Yep, last year's 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Yeah. Okay, 6th, okay. 7th, and 8th graders. The blue are some of the seniors now. Yeah, so if you go back that far, that's actually our seniors. So the reason we bring this much data to you is because that's actually what the state report card uses. It uses three years. Because we had that skip here, it really extends that out quite a bit. All right. The other thing, when you look at trend data, you want to follow a cohort through sometimes. This doesn't necessarily do that because this is not the same class as this class as this class. Those are all different classes and make, make up of kids. All right. Um, but I really want to highlight something here because our middle school scored very well. Uh, but on average, okay, we're scoring 80%, um, 82% between those, these two years. Okay, we dip down all the way to, it's the right thing here, I think it was like 50%. Yeah, 54%, okay? So that's concerning to me. Um, that's not reflected in the report card, I don't think enough, but that's concerning to me because that's not Sebastopol. All right, even though that bar, that yellow bar is way above the state average at 36%, um, what this is telling me right now is that 54% or five out of 10 students are proficient or advanced in middle school ELA, okay? So that's something that I wanna look at. I wanna be closer to that 80, 85% where we have been in the past, all right? So I just wanted to point that out because I think that's an area for us to dig into um, and I think it's really important. Um, like I said, we're above the state and local average, but I don't think that's good enough for Sebastopol, so we'll continue to look at that piece. This is middle school mathematics. Same thing with the trend lines. We do trend down a little bit, so do most of our districts. Um, in this situation, Sebastopol math is at 69%, and the state average is at 32%. So this is middle school uh, math, and this yellow bar again represents last year's 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. This is our high school ELA proficient in advance. All right? So um, our, if, you, if you remember the scores, the cumulative scores that Mrs. Markraft gave, our high school is actually our lowest performing building or school. Um, but according to this data, if you take a look at this for English language arts, for last year's freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, okay, because seniors not, are not included in this, we had fairly good growth, or actually higher performance, I should say. Okay? But at, in, 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 when you dig into this, so I ask myself, I look at this and I say, gosh, our achievement looks really good. And the state report card shows that we've got 73% of our students that are at proficient or advanced. However, what I want to know is, remember that graph that I showed you before that's cut in half? I want high achieving, high growth, okay? We've got high achieving, low growth right now, and that's why we um, didn't have 
the scores that we would have wanted here. All right, so it's nice to have high achieving kids, but you want to keep moving them forward. All right, and so I'm just saying, and I'm not saying they didn't grow, that's not at all true. They didn't probably meet their expected growth, and so that's where that is reflected in the report card. But those are the things that this allows us to dig into and really look at in more detail. Um, so as far as achievement, you can see though in ULA, in comparison to the state and, and uh, local average, our students did very well. Um, the same thing is the case in math. And again, we have an uptrend, and every other district has that downtrend. Um, so there is something happening here. And that's working well, I think. Um, but that represents uh, 16, uh, on the page here, 71 um, percent here, where the state average is at 31 percent. So the most important part of this is the opportunity that it provides for us for continuous improvement. And that's what we really want to talk about. Um, this, like Mrs. Margraf said, is a flashlight, it's a look. Um, I kind of highlighted the data and how recent it is, and some of it is, is, you know, we're looking at kids that have already graduated in high school, but this is really an opportunity for us. And this is what we're here to do, is to take a look at data and to talk to our staff and move students forward. And so we've come up with a plan of continuous improvement that we want to share with you. The first thing that we want to look at and talk about is uh, we're preparing with those ESSER funds task force, like I talked about the ELA task force, Okay, we're doing a lot of work with those groups. Um, since I talked to you about the task force, we have. Whoops. Since I talked to, since I talked to you about the task force, we all have um, task force set up on all the different buildings. So Mr. Hiltz has done a number of things in his elementary. We've done things in our middle school, and we're continuing to do things in our high school. They're not fully vetted yet, but we'll continue to work on that. The second thing that we have is uh, the ELA task force itself. I just wanted to give you a brief update. They've had two uh, full days of professional development in the last two weeks, and they have a new uh, intervention tool that they're ready to implement starting next week. So that has made a tremendous amount of progress, and I'm really happy with the work that's happened there. Uh, as far as ELA across the board, we have a really powerful resource that has a lot of tools available to our staff. And if we use those to their integrity, we know that growth will come from that. So what we want to do right now, or what we're doing, is we're creating an ELA survey that we're going to send to all of our teachers, say, how are you using this resource? How are you using these tools? And what kind of training can we give you so that you use what we already have that's aligned, K-12, and you're using it to integrity uh, or fidelity. So that's one thing that we're working on right now. Uh, and then if they need more training in a specific area, we're going to go ahead and follow up with that. All right? Uh, let's see, as Mr. Barrett mentioned, you know, we're working on some things at the elementary level as well. One of those is taking a look at some computer programs. Uh, there's a program called Lalio. Lalilo. Um, it is focused more on the uh, lower elementary grades. And uh, the same company also has something called Freckle, and that's something that goes from uh, kindergarten all the way up to fifth grade and beyond. Uh, the nice thing about that is it ties in with the MAPS scores, MAP test information, so it wraps right into it. It can dictate to the students what it is that they need to work on and provide them lessons based on that. Um, the teacher can also go in and can assign different things that uh, the teacher thinks that a student needs to work on. Uh, the nice thing about this is if you're going to get kids to uh, grow more than what they have or to try and make up some of that time, you need to find some time outside of a regular school day or a regular lesson. Uh, this allows kids to do some things at home. Uh, the uh, programs, if we were to buy licenses for them, would carry through uh, summer as well. So there would be some opportunities for some kids to do some development beyond the regular school day. Um, <clears throat> we're also going to continue looking, as I mentioned before, uh, using some of the in-house measures that we have, uh, using MAP, using PALS, uh, to assess where our students are, where their um, holes might be in their learning from the experience last year and seeing what we can do to try and make up uh, those grounds. Um, I know that our title department is doing an excellent job working with the students that uh, have been assigned uh, there. Um, but our teachers are always looking for ways to work with those students too. And I know uh, the new setup that we have here at the school uh, with the garage doors and the classes being able to work together has been a nice addition. Um, teachers are able to group kids and do some things, team teaching, if you will. Um, and so that's been a plus as well. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to re reiterate uh, a, a point that I've already made uh, tonight. That we're going to use the state report card and the interval data that we get 
um, as a flashlight to dig deeper. Now we have the opportunity, we've got real data in front of us, so we're going to continue to dig deeper into the strengths and opportunities to improve our students' success. Um, in January, I'm going to start, I'm actually started already, investigating ways to improve our summer program. We have an opportunity to create a robust summer program and enrichment program, so it's both for intervention and for um, enrichment. Um, and again, I'm going to really start planning with staff come the beginning of the new year. Um, when, I, when we talk about growth, we talk about growth for every single student. It's not just our students who are not um, where they need to be. It's our student, every student has to grow. So we have to provide opportunities for every one of our students, not solely focused on kids who aren't there yet. There's a lot of our kids that are there yet, and what are we going to do to continue their growth? What are we going to do to continue their journey? Um, so that is something as a staff we're going to look at that. We feel like Summer um, is a great opportunity. We feel like we can do it now, but then also really looking forward and saying, how can we utilize this building? How can we utilize now the data to, to make sure that we are um, keeping pace for every one of our students? And then the final one here um, is one where we're going to continue to investigate and maintain the accuracy of Sebastopol data. Through this process, through the revision of the new uh, report card, we realized how much really goes into the accuracy of our data and how much we have to consistently look at our data to make sure that when it comes to an enormous document that comes out that gives our school, our school a score, we need to make sure that not only our demographics correct, um, but also all the things that go into beyond achievement and growth. It's the career readiness. There's so many scores that we get through um, throughout the report card, but we have to make sure that our data is correct and we're doing everything that we can uh, to truly showcase what our teachers are doing for our students and how our students are performing in all of these opportunities. So um, that's one that is a year on, ongoing process, the, the data review. That's what we've prepared tonight, um, and thank you so much for listening and learning with us. Okay. Any questions? Um, yeah. Any questions you want to correct? I, I kind of agree with, with elementary. Um, our homework assignments for elementary students, specific to that student, uh, they, maybe you can't answer this tonight, but I mean, sometimes I, I meet with parents or you know, parents and, you know, think that maybe their children are doing too much homework as an elementary student. I wonder if they're specific to the needs of that student or are they just general homework assignments? I, I think there's both. Um, I think, <coughs> speaking in generalities, but, um, you know, if there's a student who's struggling with something, they're going to get some extra work in a particular area. If there's something generally that's being learned, um, all of the students are going to be getting that same material. So that would be related to the parents and, and parent teacher meetings, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, and certainly if there's people who are talking to you about that, I would encourage them to contact the teacher, the teacher. and say, <laughs> instead you know, of moping and change. I would hope that a teacher would be able to explain to them. Right. Can I add one thing to that? I do know that the teachers are differentiating, right? Mm -hmm. And they're really, really differentiating a lot this year because there are so many different needs and so many different pockets, too. So, you know, I know that that's something that would naturally come based on what the student needs to work on. Mm -hmm. So that differentiation does happen, but again, I can't echo that enough if a parent or guardian feels it, reach out and make sure that it's targeted to what the kids need, for sure. We need that partnership to know. Right. Um, so first, to echo to the school and the staff, the score is awesome against the state of Wisconsin. Right? I, my question on data, we've been bantering the word data around for a while. And so when, this is like my memory, my short memory around here is we get a data brief once a year of a report card. So what I think, I'd like to find a way to start, like you just said, more consistently look at the data, right? And there's a lot of internal data. And you mentioned there's PALs and maps um, and internal data. So what I would like to see, and maybe you have this somewhere, so we got to talk about how that's, how that's available so that we can talk about it as a group. But like a five-year average, right? Dive into all this stuff, not that one report thing, right? Because first of all, we're doing good against the state, but I will tell you based on what you said, we need more critical thinkers. That's my word. Critical thinking, you said problem solvers. Problem solvers. So we're doing a great job, and so that's great. But if we, if, when you have this data, let's use the data, and maybe you're using it more than I understand, but I want to use this data because then, I know 
I trust that the data will guide you in which classes have different challenges. And you'll actually find because you've already started that teacher shadowing other teachers thing, right? This will also start to identify that maybe the, the math and English that did great under COVID, you know, what techniques did they use that are different, right? But it, let's get into the data more than, if we're gonna use the data, our sole product in a school district is an educated kid. That's our product. And this data evaluates that. So I guess what I'm asking, and I don't know who I'm asking, so I, I get I like the improvement. I think the improvement's digging into it. But I want to see what you guys do with the data. And I want to see regular briefings on this or get into the data or have somebody else brief us. There is data here year-round. And you get new map tests and you have things going. Because I think then, well, let's just say maybe you're already doing that. Well, if we're aware of it, we're going to better understand why maybe we need to encourage uh, this cross-training with other schools so that we can have other teachers. Or maybe we got to get realistic about having another teacher of some sort, you know, which are budget issues, and those are things that just don't happen overnight. So that's the thing. I really think we can do more with data. I mean, from, that from, from what I've seen. You, you guys may do lots of stuff with data, but I don't see it. And I think, and I don't, maybe it's a different forum, but... Uh, that's what trends are because right now what I've done with this for the last six years is we have an awesome school that's awesome that's what the aid that's what it says that's good but I also care about the actual kids in the building and when they're leaving and how successful they are and Sue's right you talk to kids right now and kids in college right now from our school struggle a little bit now maybe all college kids can, can do you know and you know selfishly my son would have benefited if he had more credits because there's a lot of kids in his second year engineering program that have a easier workload than him now for me that's you know suck it up and work hard that's how we are right so I, those are things that I think we can do more with data and I, I, I want to I don't know how to, I want to have a follow-on from this day and Sue you had mentioned someone in the county knows data great I guess for me personally I'd like to understand it better because then when you brief us, we'll understand it. Because this is cool, 81 game. What does that even mean? Does that mean our seniors are going to go to uh, an industry in town and start a career with critical thinking? Because And do 20 years later, they're an amazing employee. Because if you talk to those same employees you partnered with, I was talking about it today at school with a young person, I mean at work. And those businesses that you're talking to right now, every one of them have people that came out of these buildings in, in high schools that's it, no more further education. And they become some of their best workers because they had the critical thinking, they worked hard, and they learned And all, every one of these small companies in this town will allow you to grow and work around. So I think our school should do our part too and dig deeper into this to find out how we're doing it. Because again, remember my first comment, this is great, we're awesome. But the data's there, we have all this data, I think there, there's more there. You know, and then also like classes, we like, with my middle kids class, right? We broke up sixth grade because the data started saying, well, we've got to do something about that. So I think the data will help us understand that. And when's the next class like that that we need to talk to? So then maybe we're bringing in another kid for a class. So I, that's, um, I'll stop I'm rambling, right? But the data, that we do not talk enough data around here. And it's our sole, our sole product is an educated kid. Uh, with all the emotional balancing, and I mean, remember we were pushing that. I fully agree with that, but I think we can do more. And I'm just, and maybe Sue, you can get us that person to give us some training or something. So let's get that in here, uh, and you guys can help work with them because you know the data. You've been doing this for a, your whole career. So Dr. Sergeant is the person that I've met, and I know Melissa, um, you know her well, and and she is a data expert uh, in the state, so sort of, right? and she's one of our residents and willing to help. Yeah, if I could add something, she has definitely volunteered coming in and walking us through that process. Yeah, because there's there's a lot of and there's a lot of internal data you guys have, and your teachers are always talking and sharing, and teachers are helping you. I mean, we know all that. There's a lot of great stuff going on. There are but, really there not the math testing because you get as a parent, you get the math test yep. to see where your kid was last spring, this fall, this fall, and the winter, and you get and you can see the growth. I mean. See it, and the teachers can take that and find out what there is each student is weak in and yeah. are strong at work on the yeah. opposite. Does math school through middle school? I know it doesn't yeah. go to high school, yes. it goes through middle school. Middle school. Yep. Now, in fairness, we're doing really good, but my, my underlying is what you know, our, our American education is slipping, yeah. so that's why averages against you know isn't the final answer. 
It's a data point, and we should be proud of that. And our staff, we always tell them we're very proud of it. And I mean that. Um, we, we have really good reading scores. But Wisconsin dropped from number six in the nation to number 20, 26 or something like that. So, right. we're, so, we're losing so our score points. against the 26th is not what our score is going to look like against number five anymore. So one one of the places where I think that we can ask um, Dr. Sargent to start is there is the wise dash public portal where anyone can go to the public portal. Maybe looking at that first to see this is what everybody sees, you know, and then really having the opportunity to be able to dive in um, and then look at Sebastopol and how we look, how we use those portals to, to talk about the data that, that we keep referencing. But that might be a great place to start. Because there's the data that everybody has access to. Yeah. So let's learn mm -hmm. how to use that. And then, but our internal data is not there. No, it's right. just, that, it's like you, the, What really know. makes a difference here when we get our internal data yes, mapped in front of this group so we can yeah. see it. And quite frankly, uh, people respond to what leadership yeah. review. So if we start reviewing data all the time, yeah. understanding it on a quarterly basis or something, yeah. it, 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 it will make a difference to your staff. Mm -hmm. Because now they know the data, you know. Now, it is not artificial intelligence, like your caution. I, I'm very much aware that data is just data. It's all the other stuff, the staff, and how you're doing it, how we're handling it, how we, you know, support it and stuff like that. So it is the whole thing. I, I want to be fair to that, but I just think we can do better. Yeah, if I could just say one thing. Um, uh, last, last time I think we talked about data, I said if we wait for this, we're waiting too long because it's so well data. Or this test was taken last year, and those kids have some, some cases come down and graduated. So we have to have those universal screening tools that we use on a regular basis. That's why we're giving our maps tests three times a year so that we can track that. And, and then we meet, I meet monthly with my data teams. I meet once with my math team, once with my English team. So two, every other week I have meeting with my data teams and just download the data. Because from month to month, if I wait, that's too long. I don't want to get to the end of the year and realize the student hasn't made any growth. I want to look at that intervention and say, Oh boy, it's been a month and we didn't see any growth. Throw that up and start over. Let's figure out something else. So, so, you know, so that's how quickly we can So as an there. example, see this is not even more work. I just like to see the data. Sure. So if you, you have it readily available, maybe we add it to an agenda within some reasonable, you know, every quarter or whatever, that every, you know, whenever, some reasonable. If you're doing it three times a semester, so that's what I don't want to it's add a ton of more. time to the next agenda yeah. item. Yeah. 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 The, the, the only part is you got, you got a little bit talked to by CISA about sharing data that was embargoed. And that's all we've waited so long. We've actually had this information for two months, three months. And we've been looking at it for that long, but we couldn't bring it to, to the board because it's embargoed. It's I don't care about current, I get it. Yeah. Like, so, I get it. That doesn't matter. I'm talking about over the next five years, we yeah. should have a pattern of reviewing the information. And we're, we should all be able to talk data when you stop serving on a school board. Right. And I, and I so so like, like you mentioned, so it's how you manage an organization. So, so that's, and we've got it coming up. Anything else? Thank you. It was a good Thank presentation. Thank you. It was awesome. Okay, then, the next item is, um, last month we talked about, uh, Jerry suggested everyone having kind of a component of in-service on some topic of curriculum in the school, and um, the administrative team has come forward with a schedule. We thought every month we could have a different uh, you know, subject area or department within the school come forward. And this is what I can't wait out from now until next November. Uh, December, I'm still working on the attorneys. They probably do a presentation. I didn't want to have too many presentations on one board meeting because in December we also have the auditors coming. So I thought we could have those two items then and then rotate through the different curriculum areas that Dave just brought putting data in here. I don't know if each department could put the data within theirs or if you want a specific month load, you know, to put it in there. Just would push some things back that if you added data every quarter or something. Well, if, if that was all intended yep. to be a question, I, I think if it's some of what I'm hearing, if it's integrated in what they do, right, They'll then come forward. roll it into each of these, right? Then because because it's like the and some, some subjects will have more than others, like security, right? Security is baked right into everything you design. That's why an officer right. will help you when you design the building, right? right? So that's what I mean. Data is in through all of this stuff and let us know how it's coming, how they address. Classes and then, you know, because the other thing I think are trends in this data with this class and these curriculums 
I think in a positive way, it'll help emphasize uh, professional development because we want continuous improvement. PS, uh, you know, the state of Wisconsin started years ago continuous improvement, continuous education. Started out in Wisconsin. A little history. We have a lot of history about education in the state of Wisconsin. So that's you know, many, many years ago. So let's just keep that mindset. Up. Let's keep digging in and let's see how we can do our best. Well, so this is a rotation we thought would be appropriate mm -hmm. for the board going through the next year. Um, let's see, do we, can I have a motion to accept the Move to approve the school board presentation recommendations as presented. Second. Sorry. Questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is carried, which will bring us to the time to, for a motion to convene to executive session. I move to convene in the executive session. Second. Roll call vote, Dave. Aye. 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 Motion carries. 16 p.m. Okay, we're back in session at 9.03 p.m. I'll look for a motion on the varsity baseball assistant coach. Move to uh, hire Heather Felt. No, no, no. Derek. 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 This is baseball. Oh, baseball. Oh, softball. Sorry. Hey. I'll get it. Derek. Nedwicki. Move to hire Derek Nedwicki. And then Ricky as the varsity baseball assistant coach. Second. Questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. So. Motion on the assistant softball coach. Make a motion to approve Heather Felder Spence as the assistant softball coach. Second. Question to discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Motion on the choreographer for the spring musical. Move to approve Kelly Williamson Anderson as the choreographer for the spring musical. Second. Questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Motion on the OTPT services. Do you like the name? Yeah. Naming the person. Kelly Rankin. Move to hire Kelly Rankin as an occupational therapist for the school district of Sebastopol. Occupational and physical. Thank you. Sorry. Second. Questions or discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Um, we should set a meet and confer date. Did you have something in mind, Mr. Lipke? I don't have anything in mind. That whatever works for two board members. Um, who was on it last time? So you just want me to Me and confer. We confer. usually have a couple a year. That's we have a panel. Okay. That's a long time. Oh, okay. It was you and I. It was in the spring. I think I was, uh, when we, you and I, it was Cindy, Cindy and Cindy. Yeah. Yes, that would be up in the third floor library. Yeah. When is it going to be? Well, it depends what which two board members can do it, and then it's usually after school at you know three fifteen, so it's convenient for the. Uh, in the next month or something. Yeah, like that. Yeah, like in December. Yeah. I think it's about. I haven't done it. I think I last time I did, I did it with Jay. So. <laughs> Sorry, it's not with me. I guess it's been a while. Oh, I know. Okay, so is it? No, no, I'm just saying it's Jay's been gone. Keith and Dave. Is it a day of the week that works better? Right now, we are on part flexible. <laughs> Whatever day works, just tell me what it is and all. Well, I guess, I guess, uh, you have any sports right now? Basketball, so Tuesday, so maybe a Wednesday is better. A Wednesday? Uh, I don't have any sports. Okay. Wednesdays are your best for each day. Okay. Uh, just next week is no good because it's late for Thanksgiving, right? At the end of the day, I can make anything work, but um, Can we go with December 8th? Wednesday, December 8th. I'm good. All right, 3.15, meet and confer. Okay. December 8th. December 8th at 3.15. And Dave and Keith will 
serve this time for that. So the January school board meeting um, is on the week of, of um, the Wisconsin Association of School Boards. The, the, usually we meet the third Thursday, which is the 20th, but the school board convention is 19th, 20th, and 21st. So. And the other thing to consider with that is the February meeting is a meeting when Mr. Litke will be gone to a convention. So. Um, so that's February 17th. I'm going to the National Superintendent's Convention this year. Okay. So, so do you have a recommendation of how you'd like us to lay those two meetings out? I'm just saying if you move if you move one back or I'll do the same with both. Either move both up a week or both back a week. Don't move January back and February up because then it would be real close together. So, so, Jan so January would be either the second week in the month of the 13th or the last week of the month, the 27th. So it would either be the 13th of January, the 10th of February, or the 27th of January and the 24th of February. It doesn't, it's a horse of peace. Would you do the My 27th? My preference would be the 13th of January. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Move it up. Okay, so we'll move both up then. And that there's no problem getting the package ready because if I get for back in school on the fourth or fifth. We come back in the third. We'll get up and we'll sure. share. So January will be the thirteenth. Thirteenth, yeah. And February the tenth. And February tenth. And um. Who's up for election next spring? Dave and Cindy. So you have to, I presume you both can run again, but if you weren't, you have to decide, like, serve numbers by December. December 24th. Something. And Jean would prefer if you decide before the 24th of December because she doesn't want to. She doesn't have to come to school. Otherwise, she's got to be at school on the 24th until 5 o'clock legally. Yeah, we're going to want that. Yeah, so. Did you get your paper look in the No, you. Did you just get it? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yesterday. Oh, okay. No. I'm, yeah. I'm usually on a weekly basis to go through my mail. <laughs> the kids stack it up and then... <laughs> well, you have like a month and a half You've got to go. So. But it, you it, got it, like a month to go. It'd be nice for Jean's sake if you could let her know before the Friday the 24th of December. So it's Christmas Eve. But that's the legal date, I guess. So if there's no other business... Make a motion to adjourn. Oh, and our, our next meeting is December 16th. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried at 9 11 p.m.